This is the Pro Audio Suite Podcast. Quick Bites. Welcome to another Pro Audio Suite Quick Bite. This week, we're picking up on a topic that George mentioned in last week's episode about diffusion, which intrigued me, the difference between diffusion and absorption. I'm sure there's a few people wondering what the difference is. So, George, what is the difference? Oh, uh, yeah. So, one is about um, keeping the sound from reflecting. So, it's we call it damping. So, you're trying to keep that reflection from propagating around the room. That's absorption. And that's what almost everybody in voiceover is going to have in their studio is absorption. You know, that's what, we, what we're going to use in our ISO booths and in our, in our larger spaces. That's what you're using when you hang moving blankets and make a tent. That's all absorption. And, uh, and that's what's most common because it's, it's simple to use. It's, it's inexpensive. It's relatively easy to understand. I mean, I figured it out, so you can too. <laughs> so did I, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's, that's absorption. So that's what you're going to look at nine, you know, almost all the time. The other side of the coin, which is far less commonly used in, our, in the voiceover context, but is much more common in music, uh, is diffusion. And the idea of diffusion is to, instead of absorb the sound or damp the sound, we scatter it um, and scatter it, scatter it about. So we want the sound to hit as many uh, different surfaces as possible and scatter about the room um, so that we break up standing waves. And the science behind diffusion is an ever-evolving thing. There is, there are physician, uh, uh, acousticians, I should say, um, experimenting and creating new diffusion technology uh, all the time. There's some really interesting designs out there. Look at one that's called a Fresnel diffuser. So a Fresnel lens is like what you'd see, uh, you know those thin, thin plastic magnifiers that are bendy? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Those are Fresnel lenses. It's spelled F-R-E-S-N-E-L, the S is silent. But they make a, a Fresnel diffuser. So imagine that shape, that the way it has those concentric ridges. And imagine that like 3D printed across a piece of plywood. Um, that's a type of diffuser. And uh, it's pretty cool science. So there's a lot of types of diffusion. And the main problem with diffusion really is, is that classically, most diffusers require quite a bit of depth to be effective. So... In order for a diffuser to be effective at low frequencies, you need physically very deep diffusers, you know, a foot deep sometimes. So that's just, you're just not going to see them in any small spaces. But I have seen them occasionally used in a voiceover booth context, sparingly, maybe one or two. It helps make it not so tubby sounding. It can, yeah. Yeah. Still not like a boinky, like like a reflection that you can hear. Right. Out. There's a reflection. It's not a reflection like a mirror. It's a reflection like a, a foggy mist. I can tell there's something there. It's just scattered sound. And um, I, I, I think it's GIK Acoustics, which I'll give props to because these guys seem to have done more with diffusion panels or affordable diffusion panels than really anybody, I think, that I know of in the States. Um I've heard a couple booths where they've put a couple of those diffusion panels on the walls, and uh, I've been very impressed with uh, the way it sounds. Mm. Um, but I, I, I haven't had the opportunity to, to spend the time experimenting in a controlled environment. So it's something I wanted to do. I really want to experiment with diffusion and better understand how to make it work in a voiceover booth. And still, and I, the idea that what we're trying to do is make a really small space sound big, sound bigger. You know, uh, orally sound larger. You know, it's like the TARDIS of acoustics. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> would try yeah. to make that little space have a little bit larger sound, but still not have it sound bouncy or resonant or anything. I'm wondering if diffusion would be a better option than absorption in a booth. Just to, I think stop, absorption you is your first tubbiness. shot. Yeah, it's your first shot. Yeah, it, especially in a small space. So. Again, I, I, the jury is out because I haven't had the, the time to R&D and really experiment. But um, you wouldn't want only diffusion, for sure. But a combination can be very effective. For example, 
I am sitting in the middle of a bedroom. It's about 10 by 12 feet. It is in no way soundproof. So I'm getting away with tons of processing <laughs> to try to compensate for that. But it doesn't have, it's got a very bizarre mixture of just real world stuff. It's got a closet door with some clothing hanging in it. It's got a blank, uh, it's got a heavy drape behind me on the wall. I'm sitting on a sofa. On my right, there's a huge, huge bookcase goes floor to ceiling, completely covered in stuff. Books, trinkets, collections, old gear, zephyrs, uh, speaker. Like, it's just a massive storage area, right? That's all acting as diffusion. It's a massive diffuser. All that stuff in the room is scattering the sound about. And uh, the end result is it sounds really nice and natural in here. You know, if I if I get a little too far off mic and I project, yeah, you're going to hear some bounce off my ceiling because I've been too lazy to treat the ceiling. I need to do that, but it it works pretty well. And so it, it's it's nice to have a bigger room with space because uh, it just sounds real without sounding bouncy. Yeah. Who was telling me I I had bookshelves behind me in my very first dedicated home studio and the bookshelves a bit like what you're describing george had not only books but um trinkets and all sorts of stuff to and that broke up the sounds but the question uh, i think one of you was telling me it was either was one of you three for sure was telling me that someone that did had a bookcase behind them but they turned the books around so it wasn't the spine that was pointing out it was the pages yeah that was me (laughs) i was it's a studio in nashville i think from memory yeah and um, That's awesome. they've got a whole wall of, of books, but with the spines against the wall. That's that cool. That was cool. So, yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, because what, so what we normally do is we want all the spines even, we want all them, you know, right across the wall. But uh, if you flip them around, you get a lot more of a varied surface. And what you can also do is just walk along and it would do what every kid would love to do is which is push half the damn books in you know so <laughs> it looks yeah. uh you know all jaggedy yeah. but that would be another way to do it it's just simply offset a bunch of the books at different varying depths so you don't want this wall of leather or whatever here yeah. <laughs> fine leather bound books yeah. um with you my don't quill. want that yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you want those random you want the randomness so if you could just push a bunch of the books in at different depths you'll get more of that scattering. Because there's, there's a type of diffusion called a skyline diffuser. They call it that because if you put it on, lay it on its face or lay it on its back and you were to look at it from the edge, it looks like a city skyline. There's all these little pieces of wood at different heights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And um, they work because those pieces of wood are cut at different lengths. And that's based on a formula. It's not actually really yeah, truly I was random. Say, there's the mathematics quadratic involved in diffuser. This, right? Quadratic. Yeah. Yes, quadratic that's what it is. Diffuser. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so you're sort of emulating that without the science. It's just randomness. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's like the bookshelf. It <laughs> like just yeah. get a bookshelf with a bunch of different books. I'm telling you, man, it is the best treatment. You want to make a room sound better, or if you've got just a big blank wall behind you and you're on camera all the time, but you got a mic, just make get a bookshelf and go to a yard sale and buy a bunch of books. They don't have to be anything good. Um, just fill it up. Because um, it sounds pretty good, and if you need to damp it down more, then then throw a big sound blanket over that, and so now you have some absorption and diffusion ah, um, together. So, yeah, yeah, it's fun to experiment with. You just it just it takes patience. Yeah, because the other yeah, thing yeah. I was going to say was you can sort of tune it a little bit, can't you? Because you could, if you wanted a bit more of a live feel in your room. Rather than plastering the, well, if you started with a room that was plastered with sound absorption all the way around, you could take. Right, like bits a typical off. vocal booth or yeah, something. Yeah, just like take that, bits yeah. off so you weren't getting direct reflections into the microphone, but that made the room sound a little bit more live, if that's what you were looking well, that, for. Can that's you? a perfect entree into promoting or mentioning at least a new panel from Studio Bricks. Mm-hmm. So um, they've developed their own in house acoustical panel. And eventually it'll be on their site, studiobricks.com, I suppose, but it's not yet because they're in sort of pre-production. But I got one, and it's a it's sort of a grid of rounded squares. They look like the perfect Apple icon. You know, it's a square with rounded edges, mm-hmm. and um, there's it's sort of a big grid of those. And they're about two inches thick, roughly. Anyway, so they have that, but then he sent along some plywood or some thin melamine wood that has a slot cut in it on each side. So it's like, uh, it's just a, what is this? Uh, 100 centimeters by, 
No, 100 millimeters by like 600 millimeters. This piece of wood. Yep. And then it's got a little piece of wood on the back. And what you can do is you can slot this into the panel. So the panels on the wall, you can take these removable diffuser reflector thing of a Bob's and just stick it on there. And so now you can experiment with adding some liveliness. And it's it's super clever. I'm I'm really hoping that this isn't just a you know, a testing idea and that they really produce it because now you can just put it up and now it slot these things in almost like Lego pieces and see what sounds good. So I'm looking right. forward to experimenting with it. I just, I need a proper booth to do it in. <laughs> I don't have one here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was actually funny years ago, when, in fact, the studio is still there. It's built many, probably back in the 70s, I guess. One of the studios in Melbourne, which has um, cork, like cork tiles, cork shingles. Mm-hmm on the wall and that that room actually sounds really good surprisingly you know the weirdest rooms can sound really good um like you know a lot of the best music albums we've heard over the years sometimes are recorded in absolutely gorgeous studios like you know just the best money can buy the best engineers and some of them are recorded in these rooms and you're like what yeah that's where mm-hmm. this this it's it's not it's linoleum and cork and drop ceiling and it's just it's you know it's it's this what is this but it's 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 an accidental thing where the room just happens to sound good and sometimes it's because of the ratios of the walls and the dimensions of the room and i'd I'd say this for a for a diffuser surprisingly good very simple and talk about depth is a curved wall convex or concave curved wall convex Convex, uh, that's the key. Yeah. Yes. It's got to have a curve. You don't outward. want to focus it. Yes, no. you don't want to concave. That's very <laughs> yeah. bad. Yeah. It's going to be right back at you. <laughs> yes, you don't want to like, focus or reflection. Put your mic right here at the focal point of this and see how it sounds. And the and the other thing is that um, what diffusion can do often in a control room situation is it makes it so that even though you're sitting in one spot or the other spot, you get fewer hot spots. Um, so you can uh, have a better distribution, and yeah. if you have people throughout the room, they're still hearing. They might not be in the right stereo image, but right. they're still getting, you know. So, like, if you're in in seat position A and B and C, in those three different spots, you're going to hear roughly the same balance of tone. Right. You'll so you'll roughly similar bass, mid range, and and, and you won't be sitting in some weird node, a complete like it builds up bass or the opposite. Yeah, and that's uh, frankly that's where the acousticians that do control room design make the big bucks. I mean, they know how to to build a room that the producer in the back and the engineer in the front and everybody else in there can mostly hear a pretty accurate mix, and that's a big deal. Like that, that's not easy. Some engineers spend you know months or years. I'm sure Robert, you've probably spent quite a bit of time. I've I've definitely I mean my my room funny enough has a vaulted ceiling that's vaulted at an angle which is technically a cone if you think about it. Oh. Right? So it's it, vaulted but one end of the pitch is at higher or mm-hmm. the center the high point is higher at one end than the other is that what you're saying? Right. My carpenter did not like me. <laughs> Cuz <'Cause, laughs> it's it's truly not you can't make a flat you can't vault that and make it flat. It's like a yeah. because you you imagine basically what's really happening is that the wall or the ceiling is trying to go the plane the flat plane of the ceiling is trying to go out beyond the roof, right? But it doesn't. So how do you keep it? It's it's a curve is the true shape. Jeez, um, far yeah. out. And then and then funny enough, what I did was the space on the lower side creates space between the ceiling and the. Uh, like it's lower, so there's an air gap between the lower part of the vault and the and the fixed ceiling, the the actual normal part of the ceiling. So filled that with some some absorption, and that's like a broadband uh, bass absorber. Right. Mm. Oh, far so, out. Yeah. So the so the vault doesn't close at the peak. There's like yeah. six inches of Trapping. air that can get in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that something like that done before. I, yeah, I was in a garage studio that was converted, and it was a vaulted garage, but you didn't really see the vaulting that much because it was a massive bass trap. Um, Robo, what what have you done to make your control room to try to get your control room sounding, you know, reasonably accurate? Are you playing around with diffusion? Yeah, I, I've I've done a bit like what I was describing. I've actually haven't plastered the walls with absorption. I've left some 
some areas open. Um, a little thing I yeah. tried on one wall where aesthetically I really didn't want any absorption, and this was <laughs> this was purely aesthetics. Basically, the wall's full of picture frames of all different sizes, and there's right. some that are deeper than others, and and just to try to break it up the reflections from there. Yeah. So, yeah, so I am playing around with a few different things. I've hung some um, some clouds above my workstation uh, this time, which I've never done before, and I, I had some leftover material from the absorption, so I had a go at making some little corner base traps up in the roof, in the ceiling, mm-hmm. um, the little triangle ones. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, so, you know, just moving things around every now and then. By bit, by bit, right? Bit by yeah, bit, you're by moving bit. things exactly. and listening, moving, listening, trying. It's probably taking you days, weeks to do it, right? You do. And you you, you spend yeah. an afternoon where you go, okay, I've got nothing on this afternoon. I'm going to try moving this here and moving that there and play with this and play with that. And yeah. Yeah. It's, you either do it this way or you pay some very expensive acoustician with a yes. measurement equipment <laughs> and they sit in there and they map out the room and then they draw out an acoustic design and then. <laughs> He's yes. spent thousands yeah. of dollars. That's right. You know, so it's you can, you know, there's more than one way to do it. I, yeah. I like practical treatment. I, I'm all about practical tra- treatment. Unless it's a voiceover booth and it's a very small space, then we're just going to be as efficient as we can. We're just going to use absorption. I, I, I like the mineral wool or mm-hmm. that kind of thing. But in a, in a normal room, as much practical treatment as possible is great. You want it to still feel livable and... And not look like a foam Iron Maiden. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the thing too, George, is to remember that, I mean, if as long as you're not recording drums and guitars and really loud stuff, uh, unless yeah. you're in a really tiny, tiny room, you can get away with it. You've got a little bit of playroom, don't you, to, in terms yeah, of, you, do. you know, not quite getting it quite right, you know. Voiceover recording and, 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 a, and a studio that you're working in solo is arguably much simpler than a music studio or a, a music control room because you're only worried about it sounding really good in one spot from your monitoring position and one good spot from your miking position. So it's pretty easy. Like for what I what I do with voiceover is, is not as hard because I only have to worry about where it, it only has to sound good right where the mic is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That mm-hmm. one mic. Yeah, that's right. That's not quite as hard to do. Um, not nearly as hard to do as a, as a larger space with multiple microphones and... That's quite a bit more difficult, yeah. If you've got a big console or any kind of desk in front of you, you know, a lot of the audio is reflecting off that as well. They have to design that in. Like, the desk has to be in there when they design it. Yeah. Because they have. that's going to be a big factor. Where the speakers are mounted, are they sitting on the meter bridge? Yep. Are they sitting right behind the meter bridge? Um, all that stuff is a yeah. factor. And and that's why the ceiling cloud is a really, really, really important. They need a very absorptive ceiling above the board to suck up that bounce off the board. Yeah. You're always going to get a little bit of it. And I think a lot of the engineers like to put their monitors behind the board, not on the bridge, not on the meter bridge directly. Mm. Um, because they get that that first reflection off the board before it goes in the ear. And it yeah. colors it a little bit, so... Uh, it's amazing how much obsession. The, the bottom line is like people obsess about it, perfecting it. But at the end of the day, you just have to know what it sounds like. Yeah, like you have to just know what you have to be familiar, intimately familiar with what that sounds like. And it may not sound great to somebody else, but That's you what know what say. it sounds like. Yeah. yeah, and you have to know how to make that translate to everywhere else. And that's where great engineers make their money. They know how to do that. They don't yeah. just know how to balance the tr- the drums with the, you know, the bass. They they know how to make all that work and and sound good elsewhere. So it's amazing skill. I would I would also love to have on going on a tangent, but have on a mastering engineer someday. And talk yes. about what those guys do. Talk yeah. about golden golden ears. I mean, yeah, that's some pretty fascinating stuff too. Indeed, it's still all the same principles though. Same principles. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just they they are the they're the final gatekeeper of what is in being what gets heard by the rest of the world, like tonal balance from you know top to bottom. And I was hearing an interview of a guy the other day. I think it was a Bob, Bobby Ozinski interview. Pretty yeah. sure it was. 
and uh, just how hard that job actually is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because sometimes the client is there. He's like, that's the word. Those are the worst ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When the client is in the mastering room. Mm. <laughs> what yeah. they want to hear and what you more know bass. actually sounds like right. I really is... don't recommend more bass. Yeah, you imagine the frustrations yeah. too. Like you, you, you spend hours mastering a you know a really nice song, and then you still out on, uh, go into your kid's bedroom or you jump in a taxi, and they've got the treble turned way down and the bass turned way up, and going, "Yeah, this sounds awesome." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. Why did I spend so much time on that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I shall experiment with a bit of diffusion in here, I think, later in the year when all the junk is moved out of my um, my space. Maybe maybe we should add some diffusion to the voiceover bodysuit. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad idea. Like a jester's hat. <laughs> a jester's hat. Right. <laughs> can, I, can I slip in a plug? Yeah, yeah, yeah go. go for it. Um, while I have the opportunity... Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to make sure you guys knew that I'm, I am finally, after many years, I'm going to start producing my own webinar series. Um, and yeah, and um, I've been gathering information on my website about what people want to learn. And so kind of like, a, I was like a survey on there, like a poll. And uh, the number one software that people are, are ex- asking to learn right now is Adobe Audition. So that's where I'll start. Is that right? Wow. So um yeah, so um, June 8th is when I plan to do the first webinar. Um, it's so new. It's such a new seed of an idea that the landing page on my site, uh, well, by the time you guys hear this, <laughs> it did better well be done. Yes. Because <laughs> I'll be now. needing to sell yeah. it. Um, but uh, you can go to georgethe.tech. You'll certainly see a section on there for uh, webinars, and you can sign up there. But um, the first one in the series will be on Adobe Audition. It's going to be a primer. And uh, we will have a special guest from Adobe Audition or Adobe named Duran Gleaves, who's one of their product specialists. Who he's the guy you you talk to at all the trade shows. You know, he does all those training videos, and he'll be on there to to uh, kind of kick it off and give everybody an overview of what's new in, in Adobe Audition. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be helpful. And um, after that, you'll be able to sign up for more uh, on a discount where I'll go into more advanced. Uh, features of Adobe Audition, and then I'll do a an audiobook narrator's guide to using Adobe Audition. And lastly, how to produce a podcast Ooh, in Adobe Audition. We must um, listen to that one. You're going to go into multi-track <laughs> as well? Is that right? Yeah, so wow. the one on podcasting will mostly be about multi-track. The advanced one, I'll probably touch on multi-track, um, but the podcast is going to be mostly spent in multi-track um, about how to set up a nice template, how to you know streamline in my opinion how to streamline the process and how to master it you know to sound have the right output levels and all that kind of stuff so i hope you join me so effectively you're Lovely. teaching voiceover artists how to be audio engineers is that right yeah. oh yes well i know i get <laughs> some flack for that i think but, i'd feel uh, an episode coming on <laughs> Yes, I think next week we should talk about expectations. I'm having an episode right now. I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm over COVID, Jad. Man. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite recorded using Rode NTG5s and Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters and mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic or just say g'day, drop us a note at our website. ProAudioSuite.com.